Hello and welcome to the August report. Um, please excuse me if I work whilst I talk because this has been a bit of a, a bit of a project to finish. Um, so my mum works in a primary school and in September they're obviously doing something about mythology. So she's requested that I make three um, Pandora's boxes. And what she wanted was solid wood with carving and gilding and all that kind of detail. But what she also wanted was to not spend more than a fiver a box. <laughs> Which is pretty much impossible for the amount of detail she wanted in terms of materials as well. Because the boxes themselves are only going to cost maybe two or three pound each. But then to add all the bling and the gilding and everything else on top that's going to be more than a fiver in total. So, I suggested that I do a bit of recycling. I think I've previously mentioned this large cardboard tube that I, I've got. And it seems an ideal base for this kind of project. So first things first, I need to cut it, into si cut it to size. And that was a bit of a bear, but with the assistance from Dad, managed to get nice, three nice pieces off and then cut them, split them down the middle as well. I also managed to trim a couple of nails do, doing that but that's kind of part of the course really. So the idea with these is minimum weight for maximum effect. So I used some more cardboard to kind of make the end caps and then basically covered the whole thing in string or in cardboard first to give it some support and then covered it in string it seems ridiculous but as you'll see as I go along um, I start off with just a straight layer and then I start to put kind of textured layers on and once you've put on a layer of um, tissue paper on top that becomes kind of quite bark like really kind of cut price bark so that's what I'm going with. And then I'm also using the string to build patterns. So I'm only doing one with the full kind of face image on it, because that takes, that was about a, a ball and a half of string on its own. <laughs> so I couldn't really do more than that without spending lots and lots of money on, on string. Again, keeping it, keeping it cheap. So everything had a nice layer of string and then I'm started with the texturizing essentially, or the surfacing. So I'm using tissue paper, which seems ridiculous because you think ah, it's, ne it's never going to have the strength to do it, but it doesn't need the strength. And the whole point is its weakness is what is useful because it will conform to whatever texture you leave underneath. So all those layers of string underneath give it a raised pattern so it's more like bark. At least that's the, the theory. So I'm now in the process of final finishing and that requires a lot of paint and lots of shades of brown. And it's, Brown is never just a flat colour, you can't call brown a flat colour because there are so many variations on brown. You brown out the tube is your um, burnt umber, burnt sienna. But then you can make brown by mixing two opposite colours, so green and red makes a nice dark brown. And then blue and orange makes a di very different brown. And yellow and purple, so you've got all these variations to give everything some depth and kind of more natural look, sort of. These are never going to look completely like a card wooden box. But I think this way gives them more character and you've got more control over the design. So and this has kind of been the main job for most of the last couple of weeks because this takes a lot longer than just carving the boxes really. And if I was charging for per, per hour these definitely wouldn't be five pound boxes but you can't charge per hour when it's family. So The rest of this month is going to be a bit of a mishmash of, of ideas and things. Um, 
tomorrow's uh, scroll saw project is something I've been wanting to do for a while is, is a new salt pot, salt and pepper pot because I bought a um, bamboo one some time ago and it's just developed a couple of splits which is aggravating so I've made another one using um, pallet wood because I now have an absolute pile of the stuff so that's the scroll saw um, dragon food this week, uh, this month is chocolate fudge cake and I know I've done a um, devil's food cake this was a special request for a birthday and chocolate fudge cake isn't that different in in the sponge necessarily but getting the fudge right is is the thing so it's kind of a standard um, chocolate sponge made with a little bit of golden syrup which stops the butter from solidifying so you can actually chill it that's the problem with a butter based cake you put it in the fridge it goes rocky so using something like golden syrup just helps to temper that down so it doesn't get hard in the fridge so then you can put your fudge on and it doesn't cause any issues with that and then for um, the three minutes go I haven't really decided I'm thinking about actually doing how to write a story or something like that which is <laughs> it's probably going to end up being a series rather than a one-off I might do how to write an essay but this time of year I don't feel like doing essays so not quite sure what I'm doing for doing skills. I'll come to that at some point when I decide what I'm doing. And then for the project and for the um, fifth Wednesday this month, I'm doing. Well, Mum and Dad have redecorated their bedroom, and Mum requested some um, Roman blinds, um, a new bean bag she can sit on while she blows her hair, and a seat cushion. So that's going to be kind of a two-part piece, Roman blinds and then everything else as another video at the end of the month. So that is the plan generally for this month. And I'm very happy to announce that I received a 2-1 in my degree so I will be able to start teacher training. But unfortunately I can't get the in-classroom experience they want before the end of this month because obviously schools are shut and there's nowhere anywhere local that's doing kind of um, summer school or something like that that I can get into and get the experience so it's going to be another year of kind of flapping about but I'm in, and as soon as kind of school starts or just before school starts I'm going to be contacting local schools to get my experience sorted out so that I can get some actual in-classroom work done I haven't been back into a classroom for about a decade now, so you need some kind of current experience. So with that under my belt, I can then start the application process, which with a whole year to go through all the skills testing and that kind of thing, shouldn't be a problem, rather than trying to rush through everything before the end of September. So, news has been interesting recently. I read somewhere, I think it was in a Robert Rankin book, or it might have been, uh, um, what was his name? The guy who wrote Hitchhiker's Guide, um, Douglas Adams. I think he wrote about Zaphod Beeblebox being the president of the universe. That the job of the president is to make people not look at what who's doing the governing, or something similar. Sorry if the quote's wrong, but it's, the president is there to distract people from those that actually do the governing and I think that is kind of where a certain orange chap is kind of placing his his reign as, as president because I don't think he's going to have the same team around him by the end of the year <laughs> I don't think he's going to have the same team around him by the end of the summer the amount of people he keeps binning and firing and yelling at it's it only goes to show how unsuited he is for any kind of command position. If he can't keep his house in order, if he can't control his own people, or at least pick the people that are appropriate, or even trust those that are appropriate to do their jobs, then he's definitely not a leader. That power. And then we have the other small leader over the sea. 
I think because of the orange chap's obvious failings, he's a young leader and he sees this as an opportunity to, I don't know, make, him, make his name, really. Whether or not he intends there to be a full-blown nuke battle, I don't think so, because if there was, I don't think any of that side of Asia would survive, really, if there was any kind of full-blown nuclear battle. And I honestly don't think there would be much of the Earth left if there was. So that is my kind of thought for the month. Because I'm finishing these off. Hopefully they'll be finished in the next day or two because I'm really sick of these things. <laughs> Getting on my nerves. So I'm going to get them to a point where I can just stop and leave them and then come back and finish kind of putting the bling and all that kind of stuff on. So I've actually get down to something I want to do because these these are no longer a project that I want to do they're kind of a weight around my neck at present I've got until September to do them but I have other things I want to do I've already started doing the videoing for the September videos which are all first aid related so again teaching something useful so there's going to be no craft videos at all in September, it's all going to be first aid. So save a life September is on. And I'll see you tomorrow for my new salt pot. Bye bye.